when you want to measure motion, motion of a particle, motion of a satellite, or even an aircraft, if you have very precise information on time, that can always be translated to velocities and positions and so on. So finally, position information will be linked to precise timing. For example, you can send a pulse of light to a satellite and get it back. And then this can be translated to a position of the satellite relative to you only if you have the precise time information. If a clock is in a gravitational field, it can run slower or faster depending on where in the gravitational potential this clock is situated. And these are very large effects when you compare with the precision of the clocks used in Galileo. When Einstein wrote these theories, theory of motion as well as theory of gravity, this was almost a hundred years ago. And there was no knowledge of cosmology at that time. In fact, cosmology, our present knowledge of the cosmos, the galaxies and all that came only in the last 40 or 50 years. So when these theories were constructed, there was no knowledge that there was so much matter in this universe. When there is so much matter in this universe, there is so much gravity as well. The modifica modification of the rates of clocks, what we thought as due to simple motion, is actually because of the gravity of the universe. So what Einstein wrote as a modification of the rate of clocks due to motion is not because clocks simply move. It is because they are moving in the presence of all the matter in the universe. And the gravity of all the matter in the universe far exceeds the gravity of the sun, the earth, and our galaxy. In terms of the gravitational potential, the energy of interaction of gravity, it is actually a billion times larger, a billion times larger than the gravity of Earth. And therefore, when you calculate the rate of clocks in this gravitational influence, you realize that that is the main effect which causes a stretching of the rates of clocks, time dilation. <laughs>